Hello, everybody. Welcome oh. to Path of the Crane episode one. Our first episode of a, a short story that has been brewing in my mind for a long time. And uh, we've got a wonderful group of four players here that I'm excited to tell the story with. Um, hi, chat. Hi, everybody. Give me a smile in chat, a little smiley face if you're feeling good this morning uh, or this evening or wherever you're at. Give me a little smiley face. And if you're not feeling good, give me a give me a middle finger emoji. Let's see it. Hi, Wex. Hi, Aqua. Hi, Swee. Sweet. 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 Sway. Sweet. Sweet. EXP. I don't know. Pibby City Lover. Welcome. There's Dex. What's up, Dex? Quiet friend. Hello, y'all. Hold on, Hello. you guys. You guys in the uh, in the call here. You gotta type in the in the chat so I can give you uh, um, VIP. And. There. Should be good now. All right, y'all. Welcome to the first episode. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with just introductions from the cast. So um, what I'd like from the cast is just you tell the audience, uh, hi, my name is blank. I do blank. Uh, and then um, give them just a very short introduction to who your character is they're gonna learn who your character is over time you don't need to give them the whole spiel just give them like a very short like my character is a this race this class exactly like that all right um so we're gonna do it like that any guesses as to what the new 30 races will be i'm not sure meteor freak but uh i know what the four new races for this campaign are so i'm excited to uh to, to have people talk about them it's gonna be a really exciting cast of characters and uh, it should be a pretty exciting and fun story as well um, we're going to start off with uh, T, and we're going to loop our way around on my overlay um, up to Dex, and then to, uh, we'll go to Chris, and then we'll end on uh, Chai, okay? Oh, God, giving you the spotlight. Yep, putting the started. spotlight on you, T, because oh, I knew you could God. handle it. Well, thanks for the confidence, I guess. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so... Oh, hey, everybody. My name is T. Um, I guess introduction first, I guess. My name is T Rose Pedal, otherwise known as T Pedal on Twitter. I play Luxima, a. Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot his race. A fawn. <laughs> yeah, he, he's his a race, satyr. It's called a satyr. Yeah, but a fawn. He's is a satyr. Yep. He's a fawn, and he's like a barbarian fawn. He, just a big boy. He's just a big boy, very big boy, and he is, uh, put it simply, he is a researcher who is trying to find a way to um, be rid of a curse. Uh, that's the only description I'll give you guys. That's perfect. Love that. Great, great little hint at to what uh, Loxum is all about. So we got a satyr uh, barbarian who's also a researcher, uh, someone trying to get rid of a curse. Um, then we're going to go up to Dex. Hi, Dex. Introduce yourself. Just what, what's your name? What do you do? Um, you can do your pronouns if you want. And then a little bit about Arch. Hi, I'm Dex. I go by Dex Streamer on Twitter uh, and other social medias. My character is Arch. He's a rogue Ar Arakaka. Good. I think. And yeah, there's not much to say. Hey, Rogue Aarakocra. So I think you're the first Aarakocra I've ever done a uh, campaign for, if I'm thinking correctly. So we'll see how overpowered your flying ability is. <laughs> Wasn't Kara Aarakocra? Wasn't who? Kara. Uh, Kara was... Oh, you're right. She was not a Kenku. She was an Aarakocra. Uh, even though a Kenku would have been perfect for her, she was an Aarakocra. You're right. You're right. Yep, you're right. Uh, and her flying ability was pretty OP now that I'm thinking about it. 
<laughs> well, I'm excited to have you, and uh, you can all thank Dex for this happening. So, give a little round of applause for Dex, uh, because Dex is the one who reached out to me. Let's go. <laughs> Dex is the one reaching out for us, so thanks, Dex. My pleasure. All right, Chris, you're up next. Hi, I'm Chris. I use they, them pronouns, and I play Light, who is a tabaxi warlock. He's also a spoiled brat. All right, perfect. Simple to the point. Um, and then, uh, Chris, what do you do on uh, Twitter? Uh, like, Or what's your name on Twitter and stuff so people can find you too? I'm Mug of Atmosphere, and I draw random things. Perfect. And then last but certainly not least, we have Chai. Chai, just introduce yourself, like say, hey, my name's Chai, I like doing this, and here's my character, their name is Blah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Chai, and uh, on in, on Twitter, I'm no, also known as Chai, uh, Chai Chai, what is that? I use she, her pronoun, and I'm playing an Azimar cleric. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, let's make sure, I want to make sure our um, region on Discord here is correct. I have it, it's set in Brazil. It's still set in Brazil. Are, are any, Getting are any of us, to Brazil. are any, any of us near Brazil? I don't even think I'm near Brazil. I'm not great I'm at nowhere geography. near Brazil. <laughs> Let me, let me check this out and make sure, I want to make sure we're in the right, like, at least the best region we can be. So, let's... Let's go. Never eat soggy water. All right, maybe maybe that'll be a little bit better. All right. Um, thanks for introducing yourselves, everyone. So we're gonna do a uh, just a quick um, introduction into the story, uh, and I'm going to allow you guys to continue onward from where I leave off and kind of explore. Um, how you wish in whatever pace you wish uh, We know you guys kind of know what the premise of the story is, but the audience uh, only knows so much They only know a little bit so um, We're going to give as much information as necessary to the audience and then uh, We'll let you guys kind of explore around and have as much fun as you want uh, Remember this game is about having fun. Uh, this stream is about having fun. You're not actors uh, so um, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to say uh, uh, line, please. You know what I mean. It's okay to 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 uh, wonder what needs to happen next or ask for help from me because a lot of you are new to D and D or haven't played very much, uh, and so um, the most fun part about this game is getting to hang out with your friends and tell a story together, and um, that shouldn't have any pressure to it. So uh, if it, if at all you feel like you're not sure what to do or um, there's some pressure there. Um, feel free to give up the spotlight to someone else or ask for help and um, we'll help you through it. Okay? Got it. All right. Okay. All right. So, in the story path of the crane, we pick up... <coughs> excuse me. Um, the year and the date, none of it matters. Uh, because this is such a, a confined story, so you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. I would recommend, though, um, if you are the kind of person who um, wants to remember things between sessions, there can be a lot of things happening. You may want to write them down, just open up a new notepad or open up your phone's notepad and type some things that you think are important down. Uh, like names, if you hear a name that you're like, oh, that might be important to come back to, or or you hear like a location, you're like, maybe we should circle around back to that because we're kind of busy right now, but we can circle back to it. Those kinds of things are important to write down um, because part of the fun of the game is me not reminding you of those things and letting you decide what you want to do with them. So, um, of course, I'll remind you if you ask me, but um, it's one of those things where if you forget about them, Part of the fun is, like, your characters forgot about him, too. Uh, so, uh, let me pull up the thingy here, and I think we'll be good to go. Give you guys some time to get everything else you might need. Grab a water. Whatever you need. And I'm going to pull this thing up.
<laughs> My notes from our episode zero didn't save. Okay. Good. Good. That's great. We great don't start. talk about that session. We don't talk about that session. We, we don't talk about it. Nothing happened. Uh, Nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> it's from a different timeline, from a different universe. It doesn't matter. Right. This is a multiverse story now. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we pick up in Azure Crane Monastery. It's a monastery high up in a large eastern mountain range. Very sunny and beautiful in this area of the world. You've all arrived at the monastery at different times in your life. Whether it was as a child being rescued by the monks of the monastery uh, and raised by them. Or maybe you just showed up a couple weeks ago with uh, a, a purpose in your heart or a voice guiding you to the monastery. Now, at Azure Crane Monastery, you've all learned a few things. One is that the majority of the people at the monastery are dead serious about their work. They're kind and gentle people but they're not to be trifled with when it comes to the things that they care about at the monastery. The first person of interest at the monastery's name is Luko. L-U-K-O. Luko is the, what you might call like the mentor of the monastery. He's the person that takes care of the kids Take, like, raises the younglings and teaches them. Um, he is also probably the first person you met when you arrived, as he's oftentimes the the greeter, uh, the person who shows people around, the people, the person who shows you where you're going to sleep and teaches you how to go through the monastery traditions. Um, Luco is a tortle, so he is a tortoise person. Um, he's roughly. 200-ish years old, um, and he is a gentle, kind of slow-speaking, um, but, but kind person, uh, very friendly. His smile, uh, when he smiles, his tortoise head kind of shakes up and down because he's, he's, he's old. Um, you've seen him spar and, and, uh, you know, battle other, you know, people at the monastery, and he's very spry for his old age. He can he can be very spry, um, but he's a gentle guy. So that's Luco, and he's probably the one who um, is kind of your touchstone for the monastery, the person who um, kind of taught you a lot of what you know. And the other main person to know from the monastery's name is the kind of overarching leader or... Uh, the person who kind of runs everything. You could say the boss around here. Um, very, very old Aarakocra that looks like an owl. Um, he is kind of... Um, I mean, you could say he's on like death's door, but it seems like he's been on death's door for a long time. His name is Rashmi. R-A-S-H-M-I. And Rashmi often hangs upside down in the main monastery temple, just uh, meditating. Um, he guards over what is called the Crane of Purpose. The Crane of Purpose is an origami crane that sits on a golden platform. And he hangs above it, kind of just watching it and making sure that it's safe um, inside of like the main temple of the monastery. The Crane of Purpose, uh, it is strangely, to, to anyone who's new to the monastery, it would be a very strange custom to, to, to protect an origami crane. Um, in that said, though, you've learned a bit of what, what the reason is, but you're not 100% sure. All you know is that... The crane is something that this monastery is built around, hence the name Azure Crane Monastery. Every building is made of, like, blue marble. 
which is kind of where you get that azure name. Um, so the the buildings and the walls are all made of the columns are all made of like this azure kind of sapphire blue marble. Um, and then the crane itself is kind of the main touchstone of this monastery. It's the thing that they're all training to protect. And whenever you arrived at the monastery, you were kind of drafted into this uh, protective core. Um, yes, Meteor Freak in the chat. Wouldn't he just be an Alan then? It, technically speaking, yes. Uh, but I made this story before Alans were a thing. <laughs> so uh, Alans didn't exist yet as a, as a race. Uh, when I made this story, so uh, yes, he would be an Allen, but I didn't want to change all the stats and everything. <laughs> all right, uh, so I back knew, to the I story. Knew, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, like a it's it's kind of like a reskin, yeah. So, um, with that said, you've got uh, those two kind of touchstone NPCs, uh, Rashmi and Luko. Um, those are kind of the ones that you can go to anytime, and you can. Um, ask questions, talk to, those kinds of things. Um, where we pick up is you all kind of waking up early morning at the monastery. The sounds of um, the chimes kind of... Uh, what are they called? Chiming around you, I guess. They uh, <laughs> they wake you up. The, the sunlight is kind of uh, beaming in on your eyes. You all share a room at the moment. Um, it's a large room enough room for all of you to sleep at your own individual beds and things like that. Um, there's a couple other students at the monastery here who you live with. Um, in your room, the two students that live with you, uh, their names are Sarah. Uh, Sarah is a lizard folk, so she's a... Uh, she kind of looks like a... Um, uh, she has the, the facial features of a... iguana. So she kind of has like... The beard that goes under her chin, a large mouth um, with like a long tongue, big eyes, um, but mostly kind of like iguana features. She has a mohawk, that, like a pink mohawk that goes down the back of her head. Um, so that's Sarah. Um, she's n pretty new to the monastery. He's been here just a few weeks. And then the other person who you room with, his name is Farkri, uh, F-A-R-C-R-I. And Farkri is a kobold. Uh, who is like, so a kobold's like a tiny little lizard person, like a tiny little dragon, more like a dragon person. He's a tiny little dragon person. Um, he's about two foot tall, um, and Farkri is very excitable, likes to run around and uh, pull on your clothes when you're walking. He's walking next to you, pulls on your clothes. He's very young. Um, as a kobold, I mean, they don't normally live very long in the first place, but he's like, he's like probably like five years old in, in human years uh, in terms of a kobold's like mind. He's he's about a five-year-old, so he's he's really young. Um, and so you've kind of been tasked to take care of Farkri just on the side. Not 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 a big deal, but just like, you know, watch him, make sure he doesn't get into trouble, um, that kind of thing. Um, but otherwise, I mean, there's a lot of monks around to make sure he doesn't die or anything. It's not like that. You're not protecting him from death necessarily, just... Keeping him out of trouble, keeping him occupied, babysitting, basically. Um, oh no, a child. <laughs> oh no, a child. So, uh, Sarah and Farkri room with you. Um, they're fast asleep as you're all kind of waking up, being the oldest in the in the room. Um, you guys are kind of waking up first, getting ready for your day. And you hear a, a voice holler from outside of your room. Your room is just a, a large, probably call it, 60 foot, you know, just a big room for you to kind of hang out in, but it's it's got closed up walls and these kind of bamboo doors that, that keep it shut. And from outside of one of the bamboo doors, uh, you hear the familiar voice of Luko, the, the tortoise, uh, as he says, Time to wake up, everyone. Join me outside. And as he says that, uh, you were already awake, so if any of you want to holler back, you can. Um, but the two the two young ones in your room also kind of start stirring awake as he says that. Does it do any of you want to say anything back to Luco as he says that and walks away? Five more minutes. In a minute. No time waits for no one, Ark. 
Tom waits for you for 2,000 years. You can wait five more minutes. Hold on. And Laksuma right. kind yeah. of like wakes up to the two of them. Come on, come on. Wake up. You're waking up uh, Sarah and uh, Farkri? Yeah. Okay. So Sarah and Farkri uh, kind of roll over and Farkri goes, Laksuma, I don't want to wake up. Please, no. Come on, come on, child. Let Time waits sleep. for no one. Let me sleep. All right. Ah, oh, come on. He kind of picks him up and like, just kind of like, come on, come on. <laughs> he starts, he starts beating on the back of your, your back, but obviously it doesn't hurt at all. He's just like, he's over your shoulder. Just, he's like beating on your back. Uh, Sarah, as she's waking up, she says, oh, I don't want to do any of this. Uh... As this was happening, like, um, um, Luxuma kind of like hangs it like a potato sack over his shoulder. He's like, like, you... Well, time wait for nobody, uh, little fella. I'm sorry. I don't want to go. Uh, 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 light, don't make no, me go. Like, I want to hang out with you. You're fun. <laughs> oh, I think you might be muted, uh, Chris. Uh, oh no. No, I just was trying to figure out <laughs> what Light would say. Uh, light it kind of groans as he sits up, and he's like, uh. Luxima's right, but I guess you don't have to be carrying them. Uh, I don't know. He's just a small. Yeah, uh, he's just small. I mean, Fark. this is much more easier to handle than you know just convincing him. <laughs> just because I'm small doesn't mean I'm not ferocious. And uh, Farkri licks his finger and puts it in your ear. Oh, <laughs> oh God! He, he dropped. Uh, he drops him. <laughs> Ha! God, don't do that, child. Farkri runs out of the room. <laughs> he just he just runs out. Um, this is why I hate children. Sarah face palms, uh, and she starts kind of getting herself ready. Um, Sarah walks over to you, um, uh, Javi, and uh, this is the the little the little lizard girl, um, and she says, Javi. Do you want to spa today? Um, let's see if we have time to spa. First, let's go and see what they have in store for us. Okay, that's a good idea. You're right. But if we do have time, I want to. I want to spa. And she gets into like a, a pose of like a fighting pose, like a karate. Okay, then. Let's, yeah, let, let's hurry up and go. All right. Um, so you guys finish getting ready, and as you exit out of your room, uh, you see Luco standing out in the courtyard, which is outside your room, and uh, he's got uh, Farkri standing next to him. Farkri, who was very excitable and kind of like ran out of the room crazily, uh, is standing very calm next to Luco uh, as Luco has his hand on Farkri's head, um, and uh, Farkri looks a bit ashamed, but um, still still very calm uh and luco's kind of like petting the back of his head um just in a in a gentle way uh and uh, the the tortoise kind of bows to you all as you walk out of your room and he says it is an important day for all of us and lights arc laxima and javi you all have been summoned. Uh, Farkri kind of looks up at him. Uh, the little kobold looks up at Luko uh, and says, Where are they going? I don't want them to go. And uh, Luko kind of pets the back of his head and says, Where they're going, no one can be sure. But what we can do, Farkri, is wish them the best of luck. And uh, Farkri kind of, some some um, little tears come out of his, his eyes and he's kind of wiping him away. Um, Sarah, uh, who's kind of like standing next to Javi right now, Sarah, the little lizard folk, um, she says, does that mean we're not going to be able to spa today? And Luko says, uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what happens after their summons. Come, Sarah, you and Farkri can come have breakfast and you can spa together. And Sarah says, I don't want to spar with Farkri. He bites. And uh, 
Far Cree goes, I only bite because you punch. And Sarah goes, that's what sparring is, idiot. And then, uh, like, Luco kind of walks away with both of them. Uh, as he does, he turns just, just around enough to see all of you. And he says, you've been summoned to Rashmi's chamber up the hill. You've been there before. He wishes to speak with you. Is it, is it time? I swear to God, I, I do not so. keep that choice company. I mean, like, like uh, of course, shield is all like that. <laughs> Fuck. Anyone have uh, okay. anything that they want to do before they go to Rashmi's chamber? So, um, there are a lot of options here. Since this is D&D, you have the option of saying, fuck that, I'm not going there, uh, and you guys can go somewhere else. Uh, you have the option of um, going and, and deciding that you want to uh, go have breakfast first, or you want to go back in your room and go back to sleep. I mean, you really have all the options in the world right now um, to, to do what you wish. You know that um, leaving the monastery is uh, quite the process. Uh, it's just like getting in the monastery is quite the process, so... Um, that would be a, a pretty tough, um, a tough task, but, um, you don't, you don't feel scared necessarily. Um, maybe a bit nervous, but not scared, uh, of, of what's to come. Just, uh, maybe a, just a little bit, uh, nervous as to why you're being summoned. You have an idea maybe, but you're not 100% sure. So what would you all like to do? Talk about it with each other. Light wants to recommend going to get breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get breakfast I, too. Maxima is like, yeah, okay. let's go get breakfast first. We okay. literally just woke up. All right. So you all head to the mess hall, the breakfast area. Um, as you get there, the monastery is full and bustling with people. And as you arrive, uh, you see Farkri, Sarah, and Luko sitting at a table together. Um, Luko is cutting up Farkri's food for him with a fork and a knife uh, as Farkri is sitting there at the table with his fork uh, and his spoon, one in each hand, just slamming them on the table. Food! 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 Um, Sarah is just, like, exasperatedly picking at her food, um, and, uh, and Luko is, has just his gentle turtle smile on his face. Um, as he sees you walk in, he looks up at you, Raises, raises a single eyebrow and then um, just nods and goes back to cutting the food as if to say, like, if you're going to have breakfast, hurry up. Don't leave him waiting kind of thing. Um, oh boy, am I gonna... One more time. Um, just for, um, for Dex and Chai, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Could you just get a little closer to your mic? Oh, okay. Is this good? Is this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay, better. Um, so, uh, did anyone want to uh, do anything other than grab food when you were here? Did you want to um, look around for any particular type of people or ask anybody any questions? Um, if you say, like, I'm looking for this type of person, I can let you know if they're in the in the cafeteria. Um, also, you can ask me like, hey, Commander, do I have any friends here? Do I have any other friends other than our group here? Do I have anyone else I might know? And I can uh, I can come up with uh, some NPCs that I know of that uh, may, may you may have befriended. I guess uh, Luxima gonna like search for an empty table, I guess, for all of them to sit. Yeah, um, there's a couple empty tables, easily enough. You find one. Um, the way breakfast works is it's kind of like a mess hall kind of thing. You go up and grab what you want from the little buffet-style tables. A lot of fruits and vegetables, not a lot of meats here. Um, the meats that you find are, um, like, fish, pretty much. It's, it's mostly just fish. Um, so it's, it's fish, fruit, vegetables, um, some cheeses, uh... Those kinds of things that you might find in a monastery. Um, no wine for the young ones, but uh, they have... Um, you know that they make wine in this area and uh, all kinds of other, like, fermenting process kinds of things. Um, but with that said, um, just your your classic fruits and veggies. Um, there are, of course, some special D&D &D fruits and veggies, uh, like, from this world. 
uh, that you wouldn't think of in real life. So things like good berries you find. Um, there's a, a fruit that looks like it's in the shape of a moon, like a half moon instead of a star fruit. It's like a moon fruit. Um, and it's kind of a, a light, lightish cyan blue color. Very sour. Um, so there are, uh, there are options like that, that you can have the, basically your, your basic continental breakfast, you know, like, uh, choices that you have, um, no eggs surprisingly, but you, you get the idea that most people here are vegetarian or, uh, pescatarian. Um, so, uh, this is already the, starting out the bad start. There's no eggs. No, no, eggs. <laughs> no. Okay. So I guess, um, Luxima is gonna, uh, grab a heap very much comically large heaps of fruits i guess because he's a big boy and he eats a lot so, so yeah I do you scrape them all that. onto your plate some of them are falling to the ground i mean i mean like i think he's intelligent enough to like stack it up so it doesn't really fall but you okay. kind of see like one like a one or two like very small kind of like uh very small kind of fruits falls off so like yeah Roll me a roll me a dexterity check. Oh. This will be the first. Uh, we'll we'll say uh, so at the top of your character sheet. Um, there it says uh, like strength, dexterity, you know, constitution. It says all those scores at the top of your sheet. Got Click it. on the little number for dexterity. Okay, so a I seven. got a seven. A seven. Oh my god! Um, it's starting out so bad. So as you're stacking up the fruits, um, a few of them fall off, and you go to try and catch one on your foot like a like a like a monk almost you know just like a karate person you try and catch it on your foot before it hits the ground but as you do uh it just it just uh you just kick it with your hoof because your hoof has no, no spot to to catch it and the uh the fruit just goes flying across the cafeteria lands <laughs> on a random table um and as you're oh like watching God. the fruit you're you're losing your balance a bit and just a few more <laughs> fruits fall off <laughs> Farkree's laughing at you and like pointing and Luko grabs his head and turns it back towards the, the table that they're at uh, and Luko just kind of like quietly scolds him uh, for, for laughing at you. This morning is not my morning. <laughs> you and finished packing up your stuff. Kids. Uh, at least I bring entertainment to the kids, I guess. And he kind of stands up and like Pick, like just shamefully walks into the empty table and eats. All right, eat so you, you gather up the rest of the fruit and go back to the table. Um, light arc is it? Is it arc or arch? Arc. Arc. Good. Okay. Um. So we got arc, uh, light, and Javi. What are you? Uh. What are you feeling for like breakfast? What do you think your character would? Do? This is a great time for character building. Tuna sandwich. Tuna sandwich. Yeah, that makes sense. Cat person. A tuna sandwich. Just, get a bowl of fruit. just a bowl of fruit, like a simple bowl of fruit. Elegant. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab a handful of cheese. <laughs> just a handful of cheese. Cheese. <laughs> just just cheese. <laughs> so many cheese. Cheese. Cheese, boy. <laughs> so you guys head back to the, uh, your table, your open table, uh, and finish your breakfast, just kind of eating and, and uh, discussing with each other. I'll let you guys, if any of you want to talk, this is a great time to do a little role play. If you want to just talk in character as your characters to one another, you can be like, hey, what do you think this is going to happen here? Or, you know, you guys can just talk to each other if you'd like. Otherwise, I can keep going. To look at everyone's Let's... breakfast and question their dietary habits. <laughs> Says the one well, don't be judgmental. <laughs> <Just, just, laughs> I mean, the two have more protein than anything else that everyone else has. <laughs> Okay, like for real though, tuna sandwich is actually not that bad. I don't know what people's beef with the tuna sandwich, <laughs> but you know. So, um, fruits. So, if you would uh, like, you can step into your character's shoes and you can talk as your character and pretend you're all sitting around a table right now and just talk to each other if you'd like. I mean, Luxima is just like solemnly eating fruit because it's embarrassment that right. he display. <laughs> Yes, everyone kind of can see that Loxima looks a bit embarrassed. Some of you probably saw the fruit that dropped. <laughs> Not really embarrassed, but more like, but like a very frustrated of him, at, at himself, I guess. Not really embarrassed. Right. I'm gonna say, okay. are they gonna 
finally kick us out while munching on cheese. <laughs> I've been we've been munching for cheese for like what two one one year. It's been, we've been here for one year. Well, it depends on who you are. Some of you've been here longer than others. I guess we've been. I mean, if you've been munching for cheese for like how many years you've been here, I guess they won't kick you out now. And he kind of continued munching on his fruit. You guys need more variety in your diets. How there is no variety. <laughs> there you is no variety. Fruits and cheese. <laughs> Where is your protein? I mean, there is no meat substance, so... I, and I'm... There's and I'm fish. trying my dietary. I'm trying something no. dietary. It, cheese is delicious, and that's good enough for me. Yes, I can agree. I, and fruits are delicious too. So yeah, that's I, it. Cheese as you do, I would be constipated at this point. <laughs> I mean, Seth's the one who eats tuna fish, but okay, it like, is what it is. I what makes you think I'm like, not? You don't get to access me if you're eating tuna. <laughs> and he kind of fell my shit again. You dropped it too. Are you even gonna go pick it up? Well, don't eat that. He kind of slaps it on, on the, like the uh, lights his hand. Don't eat that. It's been past five minutes. You don't need to eat that. Okay, but if it's peelable fruit, you just take the skin off, and it's okay. Why I mean, is it, like is it peel though? Is it peel or not? Is it, is it for peel or not? The, pick, like, the, the, the fruit one that, that Light picked up is, uh, is a pre-peeled banana. <laughs> okay, so he does slap it. He does slap it. Don't, we don't, we don't want to get sick in the mission. It's I, covered in little monastery cockroaches. Oh, Take like, off the oh, children. It's covered in cockroaches, Light's gonna throw it on the ground again. He's like, never mind. <laughs> Ignore everything I See? Just said. See? I told you, you so. Least, you could have at least picked it up to throw it away. Keep I it mean, we don't have these cockroaches. You are the problem. <laughs> I, excuse me. I, I'm not the monastery um, pest control. That's the monastery budget income. It's job, not mine. And he munches again with this fruit, but more forcefully now, like, crunch me. <laughs> Mine's like crunching another apple crunch. Gonna stare at Luxima and then shake his head and finish off his tuna sandwich. And then Javi, as you're enjoying your little bowl of fruit, um... yeah, Javi's just enjoying the bowl of fruit while watching them like do all these stuff. And uh, <laughs> as you're as you're enjoying that, um, a familiar voice behind you of uh, Sarah, the, uh, the lizard folk. Um, she is. She has her own little plate. She's going back for more food, and she stops by your table, uh, and she says, "Good luck, everyone. I hope that uh, everything goes well. And um, Harvey, make sure you come back so we can." Yeah. And she kind of like turns away, nervously. All right. Oxima kind of waves. Also, good luck on your studies as well. Thank you. She says as she starts filling up her plate, uh, and she she fills it up. Uh, almost identically to the way you filled it up, just like full of fruit, um, and uh, a few of them fall. And uh, she's gonna go. roll. A, she's gonna roll a dex check <laughs> no. to try and. Oh, if she actually succeeds, this will be a good character moment for Luxima. <laughs> so uh, as as she's filling up her plate, one of the um, bananas falls from her plate, and she puts her foot out to catch it, and it lands directly on the arch of her foot. And then she kicks it back up, and it lands on top of the pile on her plate. And she, she uh, elegantly walks back to the table with Luko and Farkri. Okay, when when Luxima sees this, he is absolutely devastated because I am not good as a child. What is this? <laughs> and she kind of like he, he silently does this, but you kind of see it in his face that he kind of like surprised and then kind of like, uh, uh this is gonna be bad for me <laughs> if I can't. Keep fruit balance. What am I gonna do outside? <laughs> that kind of thing. And, Imagine uh, getting blown up by a child. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> shut up! Shut up! <laughs> shut up! This is what you get. Destroyed. Uh, this is what I get for picking up a child. I guess. <laughs> you shouldn't bully the children. They will bully you back. 
I mean, they're children. You gotta bite back. I do not <laughs> give mercy to the little menace. You, uh, as you guys are talking and um, kind of just you know, arguing, just not big arguing, but just you know, bickering back and forth, you hear a voice from uh, the table over, uh, and it's Luco as he goes, <clears throat> and he raises his eyebrows at you. Um, I have uh, breakfast. Uh, We're hungry. Uh, we, uh, we're nervous, okay? We're just like <clears throat> getting off some nerve. Uh, he rocks almost gotta eat faster. <laughs> You kind of see him choke a little bit, and then get smarter. <laughs> okay. Ark, what did you say you were going to do? I'm going to raise my eyebrow at him. <laughs> you raise your eyebrow <laughs> back. He, he raises his eyebrows more, too. He, he's straining now. You've got a challenge, old man. <laughs> I don't think Lots you want to challenge me, Ark. You've got a mission. Fine, whatever. Luco gives you a gentle Lux smile. Luxuba kind of like pats Art on the back while he's coughing because he's choking. Like, good, good try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you guys finish up your breakfast. Are you planning on heading to uh, Rashbi's chamber in the, the main temple, or what do you guys want to do? I mean, there. like breakfast. I guess we should go now. Yeah, we have. Have you have our breakfast? We should go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You guys head up the blue marble steps up to this temple that's kind of at the peak of the monastery. It's the highest building on the campus, and uh, most certainly the most ornate building. As you walk up, there is no doors on this building. It's like a completely open, uh, held up by columns structure uh, for the most part. And um, you see Rashmi in the same spot he's usually always in. Uh, he's hanging upside down above the crane. And uh, as he's hanging there, his eyes are shut. His little owl head is facing away from you. Um, but it turns to face you all the way, like 180 degrees, it turns around and faces you as you come in. So his body is facing away from you, but his head is facing towards you. If you know how an owl works, uh, it's, it's very creepy. Um, but uh, mm. as you come in, you hear his voice echo throughout the chamber. Ah, you finally made it. I've been waiting on you for. Anyone say anything? We had breakfast. We, <laughs> we were well. hungry. <laughs> I wish I didn't make it. <laughs> uh, so uh, as you say that, his head kind of tilts and uh, he says, Breakfast was a good idea. Young ones, as you have a long bath ahead of you. And, Ark, I know you don't want to be here. But the crane has chosen you, as have I. Uh, is anyone else, um, like, so I'm, I'm curious about your characters in this moment. Who, uh, whose character is, like, excited about having a purpose here? Like, is excited about what they're doing? And then whose character is, like, maybe pissed off that they have to be here or that they feel like they have to be here? And whose character is just, like, kind of doesn't really care about what's going on and is just going with the flow? Light is internally excited, but he's not going to really show it. Okay. Abby's probably pretty excited since I mean, she's been in the monastery for like her whole life. And this is probably going to be her, the most important thing that she'll encounter. Perfect. I know. Oh, I just What's want to be sweet. Go on. Go on, Dex. You, you, you speak first. 
I just wanna mess with the old guys. Okay. And I guess Luxuma is kind of like um, uh, have having mixed feelings about this because his initial quest is much more different than this, and he kind of gets dragged along because of this. But he's not really angry about it because the monastery provides knowledge, I guess, and shelter. So he's not really that mad. But he kind of treats this as a like side quest, I guess, in his mind, I guess. Okay. Important side quest. Right. Important side quest. So, um. As you're all kind of standing there, uh, Rashmi says, Javi, I know you've been waiting for this moment. It has come. Light, you may not show it, but I think you're ready. Ark, your skills are needed. And Laksma, you may not think this your purpose. But believe me when I tell you, and when your axe tells you, that it is. Does anyone say anything back? When he, men when he mentioned the axe, Luxuma internally whines because, like, ugh. Yeah, like, no. He, he doesn't really agree with him, like, at the same time. Like, he's, like, I'm forced to do this, not because I want to. Right. He kind of, like, he doesn't like when he mentioned the axe. And that makes sense. Um, does anyone else want to say anything back before he goes on? Or have, uh, like, a question they want to put out? Little, like, listening. And, and just, just pay attention. All right. So, for the first time in your lives, you see Rashmi drop from the ceiling and land on his feet. Next to the crane. As he does, he kind of meanders over to it. Again, he's very old. So he kind of meanders over to it. And he takes his large winged hand and puts it on top of this, like, glass case that the, that the crane is inside of. And he lifts the, the glass case off of it. As he does, he kind of sets it on the ground, and the crane itself... This like little white parchment origami crane begins to kind of rustle. Its its little wings begin to kind of beat just slightly, just like I mean, it's not like it's trying to fly, just like it's stretching almost. It moves its little origami neck around, which crinkles as you can hear it almost echo throughout the chamber. The little the little crinkles that it makes, and it kind of stretches its wings out in two different directions. And Rashmi says. The crane has awoken, which means the evil is near. There are many people at this monastery who I could choose to protect this creature, but it is not my choice. Watch. And you watch as the little origami crane folds itself. It, it begins to like flutter up in the air and then it quickly kind of turns in a circle and almost in the snap of a finger, it transforms itself into a folded up paper ax, which falls down to the, the platform that it was on. And he picks it up and uh, Loxima, you recognize this ax. As Rashmi is picking the axe up and kind of holding it, this little paper axe, he lets it go and the crane goes back into a crane and then uh, folds itself up into the shape of a cat tail. And then Rashmi kind of picks it up and dangles it, lets it go, and the crane transforms again and then transforms once more into what looks like um, Javi. It kind of looks like the... Uh, the like outfit that you're wearing, like a like a paper version of the outfit that you're wearing at, currently at the moment, and then it transforms once more, Arch into the same shape, the exact same shape as your wings that you have. He lets it go once more, and the crane just stays as a crane, and it kind of flutters in the air, 
uh, and it kind of flies around Rashmi's head in a almost a an, almost an annoying fashion. It like flies around his head and then like beats its wings kind of uh, next to his ear, and he kind of uh, Rashmi kind of like pushes it away from his ear, and he says, "Yes, yes, I know, I know. These are who you've picked. I know." Does anyone say anything or want to do anything or have any questions so far? Yes, Abby's probably just a bit shocked right now and processing everything. And this is okay to ask. If, as a player, you're like, I'm not sure what you're saying, Commander. Like, I'm not sure if I get what you're trying to get at. So you can let me know, too, if you're like, oh, could you re-explain that or, or put in different words for me? I can do that, too. So anytime, anytime I say something, you're like, I didn't quite get that. Just have me repeat it. It's not a big deal. Now I can have double things. <laughs> Why do you even want this? Why? <laughs> double this, please. <laughs> All right. So, as Rashmi stands there with the uh, with the crane. Uh, the crane kind of flutters over to you all. Rashmi almost instinctively reaches out for it to like grab it before it can fly away, but he stops himself. And the flame kind of the crane kind of flies over to you all and flutters around your face. Um, light it kind of flies in front of your face and then folds itself up into a thumbs up symbol, and then folds itself back into a crane before it falls to the ground. Um, and then it flutters over to you, Loxima, and it folds itself up into um the shape of a like smiley face and then like kind of turns in a circle around your face and it's it's just like it seems excited and it's it's constantly changing shape and fluttering around you all um you're not sure what it's for though yet necessarily you know that the monastery has been, been about protecting this thing but you're not sure first of all why it picked you or second of all even what it's for so this would be a good time to, um, whoever wants to speak up can ask Rashmi or ask the crane or whatever you want to do. Uh, Loxima, you can also ask your axe, which you can communicate with on a very simple level. I guess Loxima, I guess, is the crane still spinning around Loxima? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so he kind of like, I guess he's pick. How do I speak with the axe? What, uh, what do, how um, do I go about speaking with the axe? You would know that you would just need to like focus on it, whether that means like holding on to it or like putting your hand on it and like speaking directly to it. It will know it. It'll know your intention if you're trying to speak to it. Yes, he kind of like once like it like the as the crane kind of like flutter around him, he kind of like. He doesn't really pay attention to that, but he's concentrating on speaking to his ex. So he speaks to the ex and... Why? Why here? Why this? He can I cast this ex then. You are Why? going to save so many people. I mean, you always say that. You always say, I will save so many people, but you will always drag me to something I'm not even know I'm capable of, and why, why pick me to save this? Why pick me to save whatever thing you're, this is? I'm just a simple researcher. Why? You want to rid yourself of me so badly, Loxma. But I am driving you towards good. If you do this for me, we can talk about you letting me go. Oh. And it looks so much kind of like uh, just silently and just zoom in back to like, um, I guess, concentrate, I guess, and just kind of see the crane kind of spinning around him. And he's kind of like, okay, I guess this is it. <laughs> Okay. He kind of flutters the, the the he waves his hands away so like so the crane would get out of his face. Yeah, the, the crane kind of flutters away and flies in front of Chai, and then it lands on your nose. Chai just lands right on the tip of your nose. 
I I think like Javi is like very curious about the crane. So as you um, as you're kind of looking at it, the uh, the crane just tilts its little paper head. Um, it's kind of like right in front of your right eye. Um, it's, just, it's like it's looking into your eye, um, but it, it flutters its wings just a little bit and then flies off of your nose and kind of flutters in a in a circle around your head in a playful way. <laughs> Javi's uh, probably going to be like, uh, hello there. Uh, it it uh, transforms itself into the shape of a hand and waves at you and then transforms itself back into the crane. Javi waves back. And then he's probably just very excited and very amazed by this. Absolutely. And then uh, finally, the crane flies over in front of Ark, and Ark it uh, transforms itself into a frowny face and falls to the floor in front of you, and then uh, kind of playfully transforms itself back into the crane and floats up in front of your face. I want to <laughs> investigate it. Right. Roll me an investigation check, please. I think he likes you. Or at least he's teasing you. Ark. Okay, with a four uh, on the investigation check. Not great. <laughs> it's okay. Our first rolls of the campaign have been a seven and a four, so it's okay. That's um, not good. <laughs> off to a great to start. Uh, the crane. As you're looking at the crane, it's so hard to tell. Like, you don't even, like, when it's folding itself, you can't even read if there's anything written inside or not. It's just, like, it's so quick when it transforms, it's hard to tell. Um, the, the creature is most certainly magical in some way. Not sure who it was made by, what it was made for. Um, you, you don't know much of the, about those things, but um, the creature is most certainly a curious creature and one that you're probably at least interested in. Okay, uh, I'm just going to pet it. Okay, as you reach out to pet it, it uh, it kind of lets you pet the top of its head, and then it flutters in a in a circle, um, kind of in front of your face. And Rashmi says, "The axe, a he portal." Suddenly, the axe. Sorry, not the axe. It's not me. I promise. <laughs> the portal has opened. It is a danger to our world. Creatures are closing in. And this crane is needed to close the portal and stop the flames. All I can tell you is this. Elementals made of fire. Creatures made of pure flame. They are coming for this crane. It is tragically ironic that a paper creature is our only way to stop a group of fire elementals. But I can tell you this. We have trained you for this. You are ready. And if you're not, You better get ready. This crane is not going to leave you alone. And you must not leave it alone. Let it guide you. Let it bring you closer to one another. And you must save this world together. Tell no one, not even the people here at the monastery, what you're doing. I will cover for you. I have another crane I have made, and I'll put it in the glass chamber. But this is the real crane, the one right here in front of you. If anyone asks me, I will not tell them what you're up to. And you must not either. Am I understood? Lots of monads. Yep. Light has a question. Why... Why can't we tell people? Why is it so dramatic? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I am under the impression that the... the Everybody knows that why we are here. Has they not told us about what our purpose is? 
Trust no one. Luko is the only one who knows why I've summoned you. You can make up any story you'd like. Tell them that I berated you for dropping fruit this morning. Yes, I know, Maxima. <laughs> Bring it off. <laughs> I already have a bad day. <laughs> you can tell them anything you'd like. But Luko is the only one that knows what your true purpose is. There are people at this monastery who have arrived over the years that may want this crane destroyed. These elementals, they are not being driven by their own curiosity. They are being ordered to invade this land by someone. They haven't arrived yet, but they could arrive at any moment. I know the portal's open because I felt it, and so did the crane. It showed me who it wanted, and it was you. You know as much as I know now. Do you know where this portal is? <laughs> I do Just not, curious. but the crane does. Okay. Uh, when are we supposed to be leaving? As I said, let the crane guide you. But you must protect it. There is a magical okay. seal on the crane. If it were to perish, it will rebuild itself, but its magic will be weaker. Three times... So we get like... Oh, you get three times life. Three times it can rebuild itself before the magic wears off completely. Don't let it reach its third life. If it dies, we all will die. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I at least take some cheese with me? Oh my god. Uh, Rashri, <laughs> a bucket of perhaps? Rashri kind of tilts his head at you. And he says, Top take priority. as much cheese as you like. It's all yours. Awesome. You're going to I need mean... it. Uh, awesome. I guess, shouldn't we be, I guess we should pack up then and just discuss what our um, cover-up story for leaving the monastery. Yeah, let's discuss that first. Do we really need a cover-up story though? Can we just... Uh, well, no. leave. Well, <laughs> well, it's it's better to have a cover up story in case you know. But is you'll it really never their know. business? Is it their business? Have been going like some some people we, may be nosy. We can go sh we, go tell the kids that we're gonna go do some. I uh, I don't know magical stuff for I don't know Santa or something. Uh, well, Rosh Santa can me. be a little, a little bit stressed. Rashmi actually hands you all, uh, he kind of walks up to you, meanders up to you, and hands you a symbol. It's like a golden, uh, almost like a, an amulet, and it's got the symbol of the, the monastery on it. Um, this is kind of like Rashmi's, um, basically hall pass for you to leave. He's basically handing you a, a, a get out of the monastery free card to be able to leave uh, without anyone asking you questions. If someone asks you, you can just hold it up. Oh, it's like a secret pad, just like like a special agent. Yeah, it's like an FBI badge, exactly. <laughs> Neat. We should probably still come up with a cover-up story, though. It's better yeah, safer, be... like... Yeah. That is smart. Hmm. Anybody have a cover-up story in mind? Uh, hmm. Maybe ask Rashmi if he has any ideas. I'm not the most creative type. It'll be up to you to come up with a lie. Well, we're like gonna go find a magical cheddar. A magical cheddar. We are going to build the most magical taco of ever. Yes, that will work. That that story will absolutely work. Okay, any ideas? Uh, maybe to look for an artifact. 
I mean, it's not really far from the truth. Sure. <laughs> hmm. um, Maybe it's too close to the truth, I guess. Uh. Uh. Like. to a different monastery. Is there any monastery? I'm changing like he, schools. He asked, um, We're going to a different... Are we changing school? I don't know. <laughs> the, the principal has kicked me out because of my antics this morning. I'm so ashamed that no, I, I switched I, to I another swear, school. I swear I have a girlfriend. She just goes to another school. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I have a partner somewhere. I am an absolute... I am an adult. I can do this. Uh, Light wants to, he kind of is silent for a moment. He's like, maybe we could say that my parents summoned us for something, since you know, I don't know, they're kind of nobles. Hmm. That could be a uh, because, like, yeah, that could be a thing. No, yeah, that could be. Uh, drop the fruit and it gone <laughs> national and white news. Ark, I swear to God, please don't fake. Him. I am already having a bad day. I have sympathy on me, my friend. <laughs> um, how about like going to like there's trouble in the village and it needs our help? That's a pretty broad. I mean, like it, the fact that the uh, the uh, character, the fact that the they bring us, uh, give us a whole pass. I guess a simple uh, trouble in the village, they won't really give us a whole pass. So it's maybe kind of important. There's a murder so, in the village and it needs our help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that could be reasonable, but, you know, again, a simple village, a simple murder, a couple of ventures can do that in a daily. But... Hmm. I, I, okay, I, I'm speaking out of character. I kind of like Light's idea. I guess his parents are like uh, kind of a noble, I guess. I don't know how much influence it has on the monastery, but I think that's like a very reasonable. You guys Other know than, that like, the monastery oh. would like, it, it would allow someone to leave or for, for any period of time, like permanently or temporarily, if their family or someone else were to show up and need them for some reason, like were to contact the monastery and say, hey, I need my kid to come home or like whatever it might be. So, okay, so we don't do that. We don't do well, it's idea. <laughs> That's wait, a bad wait, idea. Better yet, though, what if they would? They would let so, you go. Is what I'm saying. Like, so yeah. if, if Light's family contacted the monastery, the monastery would be like, "Yeah, you guys should go." We could, we could do that, and maybe Light's family was like, "Hey, bring your friends, bring your buddies." So, it's a good excuse. I mean, yeah, yeah. we're gonna go buy some meat. <laughs> We gotta go find cheese. We gotta go find some chancy cheese, my friend. Yeah. Don't you worry. And he pats Art on the back. We gotta find some cheese. Hmm. Well, okay. I suppose. Which I guess we are using them. Uh, Laksuma kind of claps his hands together. I guess we are in an agreement that Slack's story is, um, uh, every um, we we kind of in agreement that it's we use Light story. Can I, we have an I or an A? Yeah, I'll say I. I. Use light story. Mm. So how are we going to say this? Like, a uh, light family is summoning her and... Light's uh, family summoned us and we're going. That's what we say. <laughs> I guess we're going to okay. uh, leave the lie to light. Lying to that light. That should work. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. We as got a line. I will cover for you best I can as well. Oh, what, what about the crane? We should probably hide them, I guess. The, the, the crane flutters around, and then uh, whoever's got an open pack, uh, the crane would just fly into the pack. Who you want to have a bag on them? <laughs> Well, if I got a bed on there, like another person. Oh wait, I forgot to ask. Like, ha are we have like our equipment on our person now? Um, or are yeah. we just yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got all your stuff. Oh shoot, we didn't consider bags in our character design. No. They come with them. <laughs> they come with them. I did. 
Okay, so everyone comes Arc with a pack one. of some kind. So, Ark, Ark, do you want to be the bearer of the ever important crate? I don't know. In if your we pack, at least up obsession zero. I mean, flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks of what? Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing, nothing, happened. happened at all. nothing. What are you talking yeah. about? Nothing happened. It was just a dream. It was just a yeah, bad it was, dream. It was a dream. Just a it was a dream. nightmare. <laughs> Arc two, let me Google it. Let's go. <laughs> the crane flies into Arc's uh, little sack, and uh, he kind of cinch it up. And Rashmi says, Your path is set. You will learn to work together. You will learn to care for one another and this world. And maybe you'll be able to save the whole damn thing. And he gives you an owl smile with his eyes. Please, I smile back. <laughs> he waves his hand and he says, I must rest, but I wish you all the best of luck. It's you just to you used your leg for two seconds and you're gonna rest. Uh, he, uh, he says, don't make me kick your ass, little man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even, like, how big is, like, okay, how big is, like, um, him and compared to Ark? Rashmi is probably two times the size of Ark. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh, so we're looking hold, up at him. Can he hold light, like, in his hand? Is that how big he is? Because, like, light's Oh, my God. Big. Light's how big? Three feet tall. No. Because, so Ark, how how tall is Ark? You think? Wait, here, hold on, hold on. Let me pull up the picture. The the. Oh the no! Again. I'll Dex, put it in Dex, the how, how tall picture. do you think Ark is? Oh, okay. The infamous tall picture. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is okay. He's not two times the size of uh, Ark. Then he is. He's probably like two feet taller than Ark. A little taller than Loxima. Can you can you like show this to like stream so like to see yeah, the comedy <laughs> to see I, I have... comment how comedically small light is? <laughs> Let me see if I can. He, he's a small boy, <laughs> small sassy boy. Why is, why is just standing here like with his head cr like cranked up, just trying to look at everyone. <laughs> Luxima sees this and see like, oh god, this kid's gonna get back pain at an early age. He's like, what, still 16? Uh, he's 19. God's have mercy on his neck. There are the sizes for everybody on the stream. <laughs> he's a tall boy. <laughs> Luxima is tall. I will never get over this. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I like the how you comparison. So Rashmi is about like one foot taller than Loxima, two feet taller than Arch or Ark. What is this? A cat boy for ants? Yes. Yes. Yes, cat. Yes, it is. Pretty much. Um, You're lucky I have food placing. <laughs> You're lucky I have food placing. Place. <laughs> Did you say that to Rashmi? Yeah. No, you don't. You don't have food poisoning. You're lying. Yeah. You, you, did you see I'm on, the amount of cheese I ate? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he does eat a lot of cheese, not gonna lie. Roll me a deception t check, Ark. With, with, with advantage. With advantage. Can, no, can you no, roll no, with no, advantage? Just a regular because... deception check. Just a regular. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Help him out. No, oh my no, no, god! No, 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 no. Oh, you're a little, no. little liar, Ark. You're a little liar. What is wrong with our roles today? <laughs> my god. Yeah, this is such a bad... bad you episode. win this one, old man. <laughs> okay, Ark, I can him. He gives you a thumbs up okay. and then flips himself upside down and grabs onto the, the metal bar that hangs above the origami crane case. And he 
uh, hangs there in his upside down state. I, I still don't know. <laughs> That's not how owls used to sleep, right? That's bad thing. Aloxima kind of looks up and talks to the group. It's a monk That's thing. Not... I. I... Oh, well, never mind. Say, okay. <laughs> Hang up down for too long and all your blood's gonna go rush into your head. Be careful. How do you That's think what I'm thinking, for right? 200 years, that's my secret. Just pulled yourself upside down, I guess. Slow. <laughs> Just get out. Just Have going fun. for the neck. <laughs> Good luck. Just get out. You pick. <laughs> All right. The crane. The crane pick very right person to go for this job. <laughs> I honestly can't believe it picked you all, but. <laughs> I, I can't think. believe it either. I also can't believe it. Do you look at how tiny I am? How am I supposed to protect it? The only one is valid in this, like, in this quest. It's probably Javi. Everybody else is just he, obsessed with cheese, very small, and does not care. <laughs> alright. Oh, alright. So, um, with that said, uh, you guys head out of the main temple. As you do, um, you decide you're going to kind of pack your things up from your room and uh, head out of the monastery uh, when you get the next chance. Um, is there anyone that you want to say goodbye to before you head out? Goodbye, goodbye to our teammates. Yeah. Farkri and Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, and Luko. Oh, okay. Luko already knows. Luko kind of knows what you're doing. Um... But it couldn't hurt to say goodbye. Yeah. All right. So you guys pack your stuff up. It takes you a couple hours to pack up your things and get ready for the quest. Um, during that time, would you like to ask the crane anything or talk with the crane at all? Which kind of me measles, not measles, uh, meander, not meanders. What's the word? Weasels. Weasels its way out of uh, Ark's bag and starts fluttering around your room while you guys are getting stuff ready. Uh, I guess, for precaution's sake, I guess, Luxembo locks the door when this happens. Okay. Hey, will this be dangerous? Oh, well, it's probably gonna be dangerous. Why am I staying? <laughs> I mean, I, I locked it because I don't want people to come in. It's are you, are you asking the crane, Javi? Yeah, I was asking the crane. Mm. Oh, sorry. The crane, uh, like, kind of folds itself up into the shape of a a rudimentary looking flame and then unfolds itself when you say that I'll, we'll try to protect you as best as we can folds itself up into a thumbs up symbol that you've seen before and then unfolds itself surprised why hasn't anyone thought about putting a uh, like a is there like a anti-flame spell that we can maybe look into putting on that thing and just so it doesn't you know accidentally catch on fire since we are dealing with you know fire and elementals yeah, I, I has anybody got like the Titan like that? I mean, have the monastery ever think about that? Like just putting like a, a, a fire protection, like something on the crane? Has they not think about that? The crane lands on your shoulder, Loxima, and then it it does this with its wings, like a shrug. Huh. Uh, well, I guess we we'll try to protect you as best as we can, and he kind of little do a little pat on the shoulder. It, it, and nestles, and it nestles itself up against your neck. Almost gives you a paper cup, but doesn't. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe in our trip I'll learn a, a spell to make sure it doesn't start on fire. It uh, folds itself up into a thumbs up and falls down to your feet and then unfolds itself and flutters back up. Maybe we should keep holding on to that thing so it doesn't get dirty on the floor every time it folds itself. <laughs> it's, uh... It kind of flutters yeah. back and shakes its head like this. I mean, there's cockroaches down there. You sure you want to be touching the floor? Oh, it's, yeah, uh, it flutters down to the tree. floor where a, a large cockroach is, and uh, it, like, leans its head down near the cockroach, and the cockroach kind of, like, flinches backwards, and then the crane kind of goes like this, like, what, what? And the cockroach, like, kind of kind of scurries off. We got a crane who wants to uh, fight a cockroach. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> So he's a spicy little paper. It, it, <laughs> folds, it, it folds its wings into a sim like in so that it looks like it's going like this. 
Yeah. So, uh, where are we were leaving off, uh, any other questions you guys had for the crane? No more. That's, that's enough for now, I think. We should probably say goodbye. Go. Yeah, say goodbye. I guess, say goodbye to the three people that we know in, the, in this part <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> what we don't <know> is... <laughs> You guys walk out into the courtyard outside your room. There you see Luco kind of standing uh, on top of a met or not metal, a, a stone marble platform uh, that's just kind of in the middle of the, the courtyard. And he's looking down at Sarah and Farkri, who are sparring. And Farkri's getting his butt kicked by Sarah. Uh, and he, uh, he kind of, like, rolls around on the ground and then bites her on her ankle, and she goes, Ah! No biting! And she, like, kicks him in the face. Uh, and, uh, they, they're just, like, arguing back and forth. And, uh, Luco puts his hand up, and they both immediately silence themselves, and they all look over at you guys. And Farkri, uh, immediately he kind of rolls over, um, wipes some of the blood off of his teeth from biting Sarah, uh, and, uh, he, he oh. says... You look like you're leaving. We are, little man. We are. No, I don't want you to leave. Uh, I mean, it won't be long. And he kind of like uh pats him on like his scaly kind of like head. Like it's it won't be long. But well, I'm not making promises though. He kind of hugs onto your. Um, basically your knee, because he's about that tall. Um, he, like, hugs onto, like, your knee, and you kind of lean down and, and pet him, uh, on the top of his head, uh, gently, and he kind of whimpers and cries. Um, Sarah kind of sadly walks up to you all and rubbing the back of her neck, and she says, Does that mean I have to take care of Fakri? Yes. Okay. Can I, like, heal Sarah's legs? <laughs> The fight, right? Yeah, it's it's nothing too bad. She uh she just kind of rubs it. It's one of those like, it's just like a puncture that bled for a second and then it's already like healed oh. up and closed kind of thing. Okay. So she's okay. She's already walking on it just fine. Uh, and she she walks up to you and she's like, I don't want to, don't want to take care of Farkri. Can you take him with you? No, definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. And Luxembourg like, so, and. Uh, as this was happening, Loxuma kind of like kneel down, I guess, to like uh, far crease kind of height and kind of like gently hug him to like ease his like whimpering or something like that. And he's, it's very awkward, by the way. Just mm -hmm. want to point that out. It's mm -hmm. very awkward. <laughs> but he's trying. Uh, far Cree kind of lets you go. Um, and he, he looks up at you and then walks over to Ark and uh, he says, Ark? Um, you can have this. And, uh, he hands you, Ark, um, he hands you this little, like, half, half-etched wooden figurine that he's made of you. Uh, he says, I, I was trying to, um, I was trying to, uh, make one of each of you, and I, I didn't have enough time. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, Ark kneels down and puts his hand in his bag and hands him a cheese palette. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes, yes. He greedily uh, eats the cheese pell pellet immediately, and he goes, thanks! And he, he runs off I got Luco. you, buddy. <laughs> he <laughs> runs over to Luco, who arc. Luco kind of... Uh, he, he wraps himself around Luca's legs, and Luca puts his hand on the top of his head. So, you have your mission, then. You're leaving, are you? Yes, we have. Yeah, we're gonna go see my parents. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I hope that they are well, and I hope that you are safe in your travels. He kind of gives you, like, a, a look through his eyes that you can tell he knows what's going on. And... I'm guessing, like, can our uh, welfare to you, my good friend. Thank you. We will be safe here as best we can. And 
as he says that, um, you hear a, a, a loud, like, the, the sun's kind of going down. It's about, like, it's kind of that dusk time, so it's kind of like that pinkish-purple sky, you know what I mean? Um, just that, that really close to the sun setting, and uh, completely setting, and you hear a loud, like, and you look up over your head, and you see a large, what looks like streak of smoke that then a large explosion happens on the other side of the monastery. And um, every, like, Luko kind of, like, grabs Farkri and, and brings him close. Um, Sarah kind of takes a step back and stumbles backwards and falls down on her butt. And as she does, you start hearing voices all around the monastery. Hello. And another fireball. <laughs> This one lands about 50 feet from where you're at, and Far Creek kind of runs behind Luko, and Luko says, everybody, everybody, into the into the monastery! And uh, he points over to basically the mess hall area um, where Far Creek just kind of like takes a sprint run off to, and uh, Luko shuffles his way over to Sarah and lifts her up to her feet, and he says, it's time for you to go. If you don't go, they're going to kill all of us here. Okay, okay. Oh, go. And blocks to my run. All right. Yeah, everyone, everyone to the entrance, I guess. All right. Run run to... You all run your way to the entrance <laughs> of the monastery. And um, as you're running, more of these fireballs. <laughs> you actually watch as um, kind of a, a, an asshole at the monastery, someone who kind of bullied a few of you, and especially you, Javi, uh, when you were younger. Um, he's, he's kind of like running the opposite direction. And as he is, one of the fireballs whoosh, lands on top of him and he is immediately turned to nothing but skeleton and ash. Um, and, uh, oh a few people around like kind of scream in terror and run in different directions. Um, luckily this place is made of stone, so things aren't lighting on fire necessarily, but it is destroying, these fireballs are destroying large pieces of the monastery. Um, as you reach the oh. entrance you see there's this large, like, um, dirt pathway that leads up the side of the mountain to this entranceway, and you can see at the very bottom of the mountain with maybe, I don't know, like, two or three miles away from where you're at right now, you can see these lights. They look like, they look like flickering candle lights, but they're making their way up the path to in your direction. Um, everybody roll me a perception check, please. Everybody on your character sheet, roll me a perception check. Pray not, um, uh, not roll the walls, please. Uh. We got 14. Nice, okay. 17, not Let's bad. Let's go. 10. And 23. Okay. Uh, oh. Hey, thank you, Louise Beach, for the sub. Um, thank you so much. Okay, so with these rolls, um, Arch, Loxima, and Javi, you all can kind of make out these creatures at the end of the path, which are um, most obviously they are some kind of like fire elemental. They are some kind of creature made of fire, and they're making their way up the path. As they do, the the trees and things on either side of them are just lighting on fire. <laughs> as they're walking by them. And you know that going down this path is not a good idea. Um, the numbers that you see down there are somewhere between 20 to 30 of them uh, making their way up the, in this direction. Um, you have an idea though, uh, all of you, um, as you kind of point this out to Light, who Light couldn't really tell, but you guys kind of point it out and, and, and show Light. Um, you have an idea that these creatures are after the crane. So if the crane's not really there, um, they'll they'll move on um so you're you're saving a lot of lives already by moving the crane out of here and and getting it somewhere else um that said you're not sure how they know where the crane is and it worries you because if they know where the crane is at all times you're going to be on the run for this entire adventure um you're not sure exactly how how they know where the crane is but uh, that's something you'll have to learn as you as you as you go um, so the path is not a good idea. There's a direction to the left 
into the forest, and there's a direction to the right into the forest, away from the monastery, down the mountain. So you can go right or left uh, here is, is kind of your choices. Um, you've got about 30 seconds uh, before you may get spotted. You have a chance of being spotted by the elementals, but right now you can see them much better than they can see you in the dark. Right? Are we going right? Where are we going? Let's go to right. Let's yeah, go to right, right. right. We don't have okay. time. So as you guys turn right, the um, the crane kind of flutters himself out of the bag, uh, and he lands on top of your your head arc, and uh, he just like you can see the the crane's face kind of dangling down in front of your nose. It's just kind of like tilting its head at you, and it flutters its wings. Um, and as you guys go down the right hand pathway. Uh, it just kind of perches itself on your head and, and goes along for the ride. Um, it, this creature seems like it doesn't like being it doesn't like being trapped or like locked up. Although it would be the safest place for it, um, it's also you know it's it's not going to be very happy in that kind of situation. So it's it's um, almost getting a little bit of room to breathe. And uh, as it's on top of your head arc, it kind of taps you on the forehead as you're running. And uh, as you kind of look up, you see it flapping its wings, kind of telling you to get up in the air and take a look around. I fly up in the air. All right. So as you kind of spiral upwards past the canopy of the trees, um, the rest of your group, you guys see Ark kind of fly upwards above the trees. You keep running down this uh, forest. There's no pathway, but just like running through the forest down the mountain. Um, Ark... Roll me a perception check with advantage. So click shift and then uh, all right, hold down shift on your keyboard and then click perception. I think it'll do it. If it doesn't do it, then you can right click perception and then just do roll with advantage. That'll work too. All right, it did one. So then just roll one more time. Do a good roll. Is it just me or is it not coming up? It's not coming it's up. It's a bit up. slow. Okay. It's a dirty 20. It's a dirty 20. A dirty 20. So we got one. You can roll again here uh, and see if you get uh, maybe a natural 20. We'll see. Uh, but you get one more roll here with advantage. So the second roll. <clears throat> And then uh, I'll show you guys how to, I think there's a way to make the dice quicker or something about turning off anti-aliasing or something. I don't remember what it was, but it was something we learned in Moonglow Mansion. So I'll, uh, I'll look it up and see if I can remember. Um, all right, 20 to 19. So with a 20 on your perception check, um, you see the fire ele elementals kind of approaching the monastery and you see some people at the monastery like firing weapons, uh, like bows and arrows, crossbows, throwing spears at the elementals. And they're like going through the elementals like and then not doing any damage um and you just see people like screaming and kind of hollering but uh one thing that you do notice is uh up here in the air you can kind of see arc there is a larger fire elemental behind all of the small ones it's like um it's its body or its its waist and its legs kind of funnel down into a flame funnel and the top of its body is just like a torso with large arms, but its head looks like it's wearing a, a crown made of blue fire. The rest of it's like red fire, but it, its head looks like it's wearing a crown of blue fire. Um, and it's uh, it's directing the other fire elementals and pointing them in different directions. Um, you get a good count also, since you're up in the air, you get an exact count here of fire elementals. Looks like there's exactly 36 in this location including the large ones so the the huge one and then 35 other fire elementals um this would be be for certain death if you were caught right now um so this is a, definitely a time to run and uh, as you fly back down to the rest of the group what do you say to them because they're the, you're the only one who knows this i say we got to get away from here as fast as possible all right so it's just clarifying down for everyone, you know, reminding them or not reminding them, but but yeah. showing them like, hey, this is the right thing that we're doing. We got to run. So as you continue, the crane kind of uh, flutters down and kind of leads the way a little bit through the trees. Um, and as it does, it morphs itself into what looks like the shape of a magic wand and drops itself uh, into light's hand as you're running light. 
Um, you're kind of holding on to it. it looks like a little magic wand and it shape shifts itself into a, like a what looks like a top hat like a magician's top hat and it's uh, it's trying to tell you something roll me an insight check please light I mean insight check it's it's communication is limited so oh my god don't why that number why <laughs> why Five. Oh, oh, God. Light is an oh, idiot. <laughs> hard to tell. Uh, hard to tell what it wants, but it seems like it's leading you in the direction of something like like a, a magic something. Um, and uh, that's that's all you can really tell. Um, when you get a chance to stop, you can kind of relay this information to the party of what you saw, and maybe they can kind of insight it and see if, it, if they can tell what it was trying to say. Um, but again, the, the creature can't really communicate too well, just in shapes and... and uh, those kinds of things. Um, so as you're running, you you make it to the bottom of the mountain after about a 10 minute run. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is uh, roll me a, everyone roll me a, let's go with a stealth check here to make sure that we avoid being seen by the fire elementals at the bottom of the mountain here, especially the big one. Please, please, oh, good risk. come on, why, why? This, the dice hates me. The dice is gonna be the death of me. Okay. That's the dice. The dice is the death of every good D and D character. <laughs> well, these are pretty good rolls, though. So as a group, you're able to kind of make it through here. Loxima, you step on a large twig and break it with your hoof, but um, the rest of you are able to kind of cover up the sound um, and and uh, move Loxima behind one of the trees as the large fire elemental looks over at in like in your direction um but your stealth checks are able to kind of hide everyone from the uh from the creature you hear it make a a strange like string of words it sounds like it's speaking almost like a a language that sounds like it's made of fire it sounds like this oh i think my uh, oh my oh. Voice changer thing is broken. Hold on. Oh no. Oh no. It's from earlier. Voice. Voice. Is it, closed, is it because it I, you knocked my, it out? Yeah, it, it closed out of my thing. Give me a second. It just. Stop. Uh, he just like brings a lamp, uh, like a lighter, and just like close it to the mic. This is the sound of fire. <laughs> this is exactly the ambience of fire. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, language of fire. Um, I can't do it at the moment, but uh, it, it what it sounds like is like, um, the gurgle of or like the crackle of a of a, uh, a campfire mixed with like the gurgle of. Almost, it sounds like a like a like that. So it's it's got that crackling, popping noise with a mix of that like in the in the background of it. Um, do any of you speak Ignis or uh, Ignis would be the the language or um, Infernal? Oh, I don't speak those. Ignis or Infernal, either one. Oh, Light speaks Infernal. Okay. What? Whoa! Let's go. Let's go. So, because you speak, demon. because you speak in He's a demon child. This this creature is is speaking in like a mixture of the two languages. So you catch about every other word that it says. Um, so you don't catch the ignis words, but you do catch the um, infernal words. And the words you you recognize are. Let's see what its original speech is here. Uh, monastery in Infernal. Um, children. And... Sacrifice. So those are the three words that you uh, catch out of its little spiel that it, that it says to the other elementals. Um... If you were to uh, speak Infernal, you might, or in, Infer in Ignis, you might catch some more uh, sometime, but that could be a language that you learn along the way. Um, with that said, 
Uh, you guys make it to the bottom. You're able to avoid the elementals. Looking at my next part here. Um, so yeah, they, they trail off. Uh, since you, you guys didn't get caught by them. They trail upward towards the monastery. And the crane um, flutters about and then point like transforms itself into the shape of an arrow and points off in a direction uh, across the forest. And um, as you all look off in that direction, the crane just like nods its head, flutters and lands on top of uh, Loxima's head this time, kind of wrapping itself around one of your horns, Loxima. And you all trudge off and run in that direction. And that's where we're going to end it for today. Yeah. And that'll be the end of today's yeah. session. Oh, let's go. Oh. Let's go. That's, that was a decent roll. <laughs> that, yeah, no. that was really good. That was, that was really yeah. nice. Good start, everybody. It was better everybody. than I expected. Good start. It was a good start. Yeah, it was we a lot of fun. We run up into the sunset. If, uh, <laughs> if anyone ends up making any art of today's session, please tweet it with the hashtag PO... What do we do? POTC... We do... Uh, was it path? Uh, hold on. Let's go check, check, path yeah, check the Discord. The I think we said path. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did not, Ryan. Hashtag path of the crane. Oh. Just that that's it, right? Yeah, I think so. So if anyone ends, ends up making any art of today's session, tweet under hashtag path of the crane on Twitter. Tag me in it and I'll retweet it for you. Uh, not quote tweet it, I'll retweet it for you so that you get all the all the love for it. Okay? Um please. <laughs> Please draw Roxuma like very pathetically. We love, like, we love like any, uh, any kind of art. It's my favorite thing in the world to see uh, my characters and my players' characters get get some shine, some spotlight because um, I think this is a really cool story. I really love this little cast of characters, and uh, I'm super excited to to see what 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 may come of of the story. Mm -hmm.